Hi everyone, welcome back to episode number three. I'm really excited about this episode as I think this is one where my collecting personality is really going to come out. You'll really start to see how I approach collecting. And in that, I hope that maybe you will come up with some, some new ideas of what to collect, who to collect, how to collect, and maybe even ways to enjoy collecting even more. So what we are going to do now is we are going to do what I'm going to call a set spotlight. And for this particular set, we're going to do the 1956 Topps football set, which is it's a 120 card set. And it also has an unnumbered checklist. And um, what we're going to do is over a period of several videos, we are actually going to show each card. I'm going to tell a little something about each player. And so that we don't get bored with just looking at 1956 Topps football cards, I'm going to mix it up and probably show some other stuff in between some of those videos so that we're not just showing that for, for a long period of time. So with that, the first card that we're going to look at is card number one. Uh, card number one is of John Carson, who he was more commonly referred to as. And uh, he played for the Washington Redskins. Uh, all the Washington Redskins cards and the Chicago Cardinals cards were all short printed in this set. Uh, the, the Redskins cards are actually my favorite color scheme. I love the, uh, the dark green background against the Redskin uniform. And I believe that the Redskin logo really pops because of that, that green background. It's something that I really like. But John Carson, he was an All-American for the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, in 1955, he actually led the Redskins in receiving. And in 1960, he played for the Houston Oilers in their inaugural football season. Card number two is of Gordy Soltaw. He played for the San Francisco 49ers. And um, at the time, the back of this card actually says that he was the all-time leading scorer for the 49ers. When he graduated high school, he enrolled in the U.S. Navy and served in World War II as a frogman. And a frogman was actually a precursor to, uh, to today's Navy SEALs. Uh, he was a member of the very first San Francisco 49er NFL team in 1950 when it merged with the All-America Football Conference. He played his entire career for the San Francisco 49ers. He was a three-time All-Pro, and he is one of three players in history, in NFL history, to have 25 touchdowns and kick 70 field goals. He is also a member of the San Francisco 49ers Hall of Fame, and at one point he held the uh, single-game scoring record for the 49ers, when he scored 26 points in a game, and that record has since been broken, was broken by Jerry Rice. He was also a color commentator in the 1960s for the 49ers. Card number three is of uh, Frank Veracchione. Uh, he was the number one draft pick of the Pittsburgh Steelers, the sixth overall draft pick. He was actually, uh, during this era, he was one of the best offensive linemen. He played in five Pro Bowls, and in 1961, he was traded to the Los Angeles Rams for Lou Michaels. And Coach Buddy Parker at the time said that the only reason they, they made that trade is they really needed help on the defensive side of the football, so they traded him away. Card number four is of Eddie Bell of the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Bell was the first black All-American and team captain for the University of Pennsylvania. He was also a member of the original 1960 New York Titans, who later became known as the New York Jets. They changed their net, uh, name from Titans to Jets because they played in Shea Stadium, and of course Shea Stadium was near LaGuardia Airport. So that's Eddie Bell of the Philadelphia Eagles. Card number five is of Alex Webster of the New York Giants. Uh, 
Webster played 10 years for the Giants as a fullback and a halfback. He was a two-time Pro Bowler. For his career, he rushed for 4,638 yards. Uh, he, he had receiving yards total of 2,679. And his, in his career, he scored 56 touchdowns. He played in an incredible six NFL championships in his 10-year career. Although he only won one, they did win in 1956 when the New York Giants beat the Chicago Bears 47-7. to He scored two touchdowns in that game. And uh, from 1969 to 1973, he was the head football coach for the New York Giants and was actually named UPI Coach of the Year in 1970. He is also a member of the uh, Giants Ring of Honor. That's Alex Webster of the New York Giants. And then the last card that we're going to look at today is card number six of Hall of Famer Norm Van Brocklin. They called him the Dutchman. Uh, he served in the U.S. Navy from 1943 to 1945. He had a 12-year NFL career and uh, played for the Los Angeles Rams between 1949 and 1957. His first three years, he alternated the quarterback position with uh, fellow Hall of Famer Bob Waterfield. And in 1950, the Rams had one of the best teams in football, uh, maybe one of the best teams ever, actually. They scored a record 466 points, which came out to averaging 38.8 points per game. Uh, those were both records. Um, the 466 points was actually in a 12 game season. Um, and that 38.8 points a game is still a record for average points per game. As good as the Rams were that year, uh, they did actually lose to the Cleveland Browns in the NFL championship. That was actually the first year that the Browns played in the NFL as they came over from the All-America Football Conference. And the Browns beat the uh, Rams that year in the championship 30 to 28 on a late field goal by Lou the Toe Groza. Now in 1951, Van Brocklin on opening night in the NFL threw for a record 554 yards and five touchdowns. That 554 yards shattered the previous record of 468 yards that was set by the Bears' Johnny Lujak just a couple of years earlier. Now, that 554 yards is still a single game record, which is incredible when you think about the pass-happy offense that we're in today, and he set that record back in 1951. Could you imagine with today's hype of current cards if a quarterback on opening night had thrown for five, were, were to throw for 554 yards and five touchdowns? His cards would go just absolutely crazy. And then uh, in 1951, the Rams the following year would actually get revenge on the Browns as they, they beat the Browns in the 1951 NFL Championship, 24-17. to 17. Uh, Van Brocklin would throw the game-winning touchdown of 73 yards to Tom Fears, another Hall of Famer. And in 1955, the Rams got back to the championship game against the Cleveland Browns. Uh, but they actually got crushed in that game, and it was actually one of probably Van Brocklin's worst game of his career, where he threw six interceptions. Now, in 1958, he was traded to the Philadelphia Eagles, and in 1960, he led the Eagles to the 1960 championship, where they won 17-13 to against the Green Bay Packers. That would actually be the only loss that a Vince Lombardi-led Packer team would ever lose in the playoffs. Van Brocklin was also the MVP in 1960, which was actually his last year. He would, he would end up retiring after that. And after that, he became the first coach for the Minnesota Vikings and would ultimately be the second coach for the Atlanta Falcons. He never had a, a very successful coaching career and, and never actually coached in a playoff game. And he actually uh, did not get along very well. Well, he didn't get along very well with most players, but especially Fran Tarkington. And he ended up trading the star quarterback away to the New York Giants. So that's what I have today for, for this great set. The interesting thing about this set is, is I hope what it will show is it will also show 
that you don't have to spend a lot of money to add some great cards to your collection. Uh, five, the first five cards that I showed, you can get in nice, clean, crease-free condition for less than $5. And even this Norm Van Brocklin, the guy who still holds the single season record for passing yardage in a game, you can get for $15 to $20 in really nice condition. So I hope maybe you get some ideas about some things that you can possibly collect that, that might be a little more affordable. And uh, I appreciate you watching this video and listening to these stories in cardboard. Take care.